Living here at U.S. Army Kwajalein Atoll, we hear a lot about national missile defense. Testing for NMD is part of our mission, yet the majority of island residents don't know much about it. We wonder about the giant bubble at the end of the island. When we hear there's going to be a mission, our only thought is about going down to Iman Beach to watch the light show. And we've never set foot on Mech Island. To end some of the mystery, the people of NMD welcomed visitors for an open house at two major sites, the GBRP on Kwajalein and the control rooms and missile silos on Mech. Our first stop was the GBRP, or ground-based radar prototype, where busloads of visitors arrived for the tour. Once inside, a presentation was given to familiarize everyone with the history and purpose of GBRP. Completed at Yusaka in 1998, the GBRP is currently the largest radar of its kind in the world and a valuable test asset for the NMD system. It is an X-band radar used to track and discriminate, which means it follows the incoming objects and determines which is the target and which are decoys. The information the GBRP provides is sent to MEC and is used to fire and guide the ground-based interceptor, or GBI. The GBRP tracks through the interception and gives a kill assessment of the mission. So while the interceptor is in flight, GBRP is continuing to discriminate both the PBV, the tank. With every test, the GBRP is helping to develop the X-band radar that will be used by the NMD system once it is deployed. Currently, the plan is to locate it in Alaska. It will be more than twice the size of GBRP and several times more powerful. The tour group was then brought into the radome, which surrounds and protects the radar, and is supported by air pressure. To enter, you must pass through an airlock, which makes your ears pop from the change in pressure. Hard hats were required inside because the radar is a movable structure. These wheels move along a track, allowing the radar to be steered in any direction to locate items in the sky. Looking at the antenna array, you can see that it is made up of many smaller parts. There are 17,000 individual elements, which are grouped into eight sections. These elements act as the eyes of the radar. So what we do is we break up the array into those eight sections that you see up there, and that actually spreads out the energy of, uh, on the ground so that we stay below the RF safety limits that are imposed upon us. Moving on to the operations control center, the tour group was told about what happens during a typical day at the GBRP. This room is where the radar is controlled and monitored. Each of the 17,000 elements in the array can be individually tested, and it only takes three to four minutes to test them all. On any given day, the radar might be fully fired up for as long as an hour, but sometimes not at all. We're not a search radar. We don't, we don't radiate all day long and, and look for objects. Uh, the mission of this radar is, is discrimination, right? We, we are positioned on an object from another source, whether it be a satellite or a battle manager, and then we, we look at those targets, we collect data, and we decide whether they're, they're real threats or not. That completed the radar portion of the tour, and like the information the GBRP gathers, we were then sent to Mech Island. Only we traveled by boat, not through the air. Once on Mech, the 150-person tour group was split into four smaller ones, and we took a short walk to the Mech Island Control Building, or MICB. Olympia Hill was actually the launch site during those days. That generation basically used dish radars. There, a presentation was given on the history of programs at the Kwajalein Missile Range. So it went uh, more to our tactical representative system, but not actually when it could be deployed. Aerial photos of mech were shown, illustrating the transformation from jungle to missile range. The various elements of the NMD system were discussed, including radar tracking, missile anatomy, and mission control. Movies were shown to help further explain the basic concepts of NMD as America's shield, and KMR's role in its development. Each subsequent flight test takes us one step closer to the perfection the nation demands and our people deserve. We moved on to a bus tour of the island, passing strange and mysterious structures. We got everything here at Mech it takes to run a small city. Uh, we've got food, water, automotive shop, fuel, AC shop, carpentry shop, electrical, fire station, paramedics, warehouses. Then we arrived at our destination, Launch Hill.
There were doors to several missile silos on the ground, some unused for decades, others so new they have yet to be used. This access stand is used in current missions, and it provides a place to work on a missile after it is placed in the silo. The kill vehicle, once it's processed and ready for integration, is brought into the environmentally controlled access stand and integrated with the booster system. The stand is rolled away before launch. The newest additions to Launch Hill are these silos, which were completed this year. Unlike the current system, everything is underground, including the silo interface vault, which houses the electronics and controls for the missile. As Hank was just talking about, that was the PLV system. These are actually the, the newly constructed silos. These doors blow open. Each side weighs 6,000 pounds. It's fired by an, uh, an actuating system, a gas actuator, that will blow the doors from closed to fully open in less than half a second. These yellow cans that you see here are like shock absorbers that will go ahead and just absorb some of the impact of the doors opening up. After leaving Launch Hill, the tour ended and it was time to return to Kwajalein. But we brought with us a better understanding of the NMD project and how two of the key elements work together. During a mission, the target missile is launched from California. Radars and satellites send information about it to KMR. The GBRP receives the location and begins to track the incoming objects, differentiating between the target and any decoys. It sends that information to the control room on mech, where it is used to launch and guide the interceptor missile. The GBRP continues to track the target and decoys, and now the interceptor, all the time updating mech, which updates the interceptor missile. The target is intercepted, and the GBRP tracks it all, providing test data that is reviewed and analyzed. Meanwhile on Kwajalein, we get quite a show. For Window on the Atoll, I'm Sarah Ankofsky, CPN Kwajalein.